to the Ask Me How I Know show. I'm your host, Julie Holly, and I'm so excited that you're here. Ask Me How I Know is the only podcast in the multifamily niche replicating what takes place outside the walls of a seminar. Remember when we used to get together like that? This is like the lobby where honest, unscripted conversations take place and transformation happens. We'll talk about practical problem solving in the multifamily niche, as well as overcoming mental roadblocks. This episode is brought to you by Three Keys Investments. Three Keys Investments is dedicated to helping people like you, yeah, you, enter the multifamily investment space to build passive income and legacy wealth. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed Ask Me How I Know, I'd be honored if you did. Thanks so much for joining me today, and now for our featured guest. Hey guys, welcome back to another Marvelous Mindset Monday. I am so glad that you are here with me. Today, I'm going to share a little bit of a story with you. I haven't done that for a while. And last night, my husband and I were talking and you know, some of those normal conversations you have, how was your day? Well, a lot of times when people say, how's your day? You know, especially when you've been married for a long time, right? You end up just kind of like, oh yeah, it was great, it was fine. But I did something and you could only imagine what it must be like (laughs) living with someone like me and being married to someone like me. My husband said in response to how's your day, he said, it, you know, it was, it was okay. And I said, well, okay. Um, okay. How would you know if it was a great day? And we got into this sequence of asking, I just kept asking these questions. He's like, well, I, I, I don't know. And I kept nudging. So I'm going to shelf that story for a minute to go into this concept of what what are these expectations that you have in your life? So for example, how are you measuring or maybe a follow-up question to that is like, how are you measuring your success? If we're trying to get healthy and, you know, not necessarily even shed any weight, but just get healthy. How are we measuring that? We have like some very clear delineated ways that we can measure that. But a lot of people don't know how to measure their internal success, the success of their fulfillment or their satisfaction, you know? And so it's really important that you understand these questions. So dig deep and you say, okay, well, how would I know if it's a good day? Uh, I had good interactions with people. Well, how do you know if those interactions are good? Well, they smiled at me and they're friendly back with me. And I don't think that they cursed me when they walked off. <laughs> you know? Or and we can keep digging and digging and digging on those questions. You see, the reality, as I spoke with my husband, might be your reality. And that is that he really didn't have an idea of what that bottom line is. What would have made his day exceptional or great? So the teacher side of me (laughs) comes out, you know, I did not do this to him, let's be clear. I actually did not create this, although maybe I will. Okay, the rubric of happiness. And a lot of us are seeing those, You, you had rubrics in college, but now at, you know, the elementary level even, they are creating these rubrics so that you can understand where you're falling on a scale, right? So you're getting scored in a different way. You understand what passing is, you understand what, you know, failing is or needing to be improved if you prefer that. And you understand the different categories. So if you created a rubric for your happiness, what would those categories be? And if you created that rubric for your happiness, And you had the different pillars of like, oh yeah, 100% would look like this. And a 0% is going to look like this. You see, if if you're chasing after something, if you want something, but it's not measurable, if you don't even understand what it looks like, how can you actually even know if you arrived, if you got it? I feel like I've been given this huge gift in life over the last few years because I've been unearthing this for myself. And it's so much easier when you understand what it looks like. What what does it look like if I'm truly happy? What does it look like when I'm truly myself? What does it look like? If you go through different facets of your life and you do this, you are going to find that you probably don't have an answer for most 
areas of your life. It's easy to have an answer for your bank account. Oh, we're overdrawn. Oh, we have millions. Oh, you know, like that's really easy. It's usually easy at a lot of jobs to know where you stand and to know how you are, your performance. But when it comes to relationships, when it comes to our internal happiness, especially if you are prideful or if you have a lot, if you have an inner critic inside of you that is always screaming and pointing out, you know, you shouldn't have said that. Oh, you know, you, you shouldn't have responded in that way. You should really, you know, drop a few pounds. You should, like, most people have this little internal critic that's constantly, like, putting these negative messages in their brains, and they don't know how to turn it off. But we have to learn how to turn that critic off in our brains. And we also have to learn how to measure and personally evaluate our successes. Often my daughter will ask me, how am I doing? And she's young. She's not even double digits yet. And she's like, oh, mom, did I do a good job while we were at XYZ? And my response to her is almost always, almost always, because nobody's 100%, right? My response to her is almost always, you need to self-evaluate. Let's reflect back. Are you taking time to reflect? If you're not, you're going to miss a big gap in things. But then when you are reflecting, you need to be really mindful of that critic that can be in your head, constantly pointing out, well, and second, second guessing yourself. You can't go back and change anything that you did, but you have all the power over the future. You. You do. I mean, COVID can happen and all sorts of weird things can happen in the world, but guess who gets to control your life? You do. Your life, your responses, what you think and preach to yourself in your head, what you ingest in your heart, all of that, it's you. You decide. This week, as you go about your week, I want you to think, don't go back to academic world and create some rubric. Like seriously, if somebody does create a rubric, you got to email it or message it to me somehow over on Facebook or LinkedIn because I might actually totally love it and <laughs> nerd out on it with you because um, I'm like that, that type A, which let's just do a little segue into that for just a brief moment. If you are that way, and if you do have your little checklist, let me tell you, I was a checklist girl. I still am a checklist girl when it comes to tasks, but I have learned that you, there's some things you cannot have a checklist for. And when you have a checklist, just because you've done everything right, doesn't mean that the world is going to go right. COVID, case in point, right? Some people played their cards all the right way and they had everything set up and life should be super easy and COVID happened, and maybe they're out of a job or facing difficult times in some capacity, okay? So you always do your best, but what is the best is what's inside of you and how you respond to the circumstances around you. See, the circumstances don't have to control or dominate you. You have control over that. You have control over your response to those things. So this week, going back once again, this week, <laughs> please make sure that you are setting some clear ideas in your head. Wow, what, what would it look like if I had a good relationship with my spouse? What would I see in response? What would, how would I communicate with my spouse? How would that person respond back to me? How about my friends and my colleagues? That's on the relationship level. But I think that's where most of us are missing it because it's very difficult to measure. We kind of measure it like hot and cold, like, oh yeah, they responded to me nicely and they're inviting me places or, oh, I'm sleeping on the couch and nobody's inviting me to go hang out with them, right? Those are the two worlds, but there's this huge middle spot, ginormous gap in the middle. Let's close the gap. Find out how you can respond better. Find out what it would mean and look like to you to have that inner satisfaction with the relationships around you. Kind of an abstract thought. I don't know who's going to track with that one or not, because sometimes I know my mind goes into weird 
into some into places of its own. But I hope that that resonates with some of you, and I hope it challenges you to think deeper on these things. Well, as always, please drop me a message over on Facebook or LinkedIn, super easy to find. And I'd love to hear from you and see how things are going and hear your successes or to cheer you on with something that a challenge that you're facing. For the rest of the week, go find your freedom. Thanks so much for joining me for another episode of Ask Me How I Know. This episode was brought to you by Three Keys Investments. They are dedicated to helping people like you. Yeah, you, my awesome listeners, develop passive income and legacy wealth through multifamily investing. Feel free to check out their website, threekeysinvestments.com, to see if there is an offering that will help your portfolio grow and meet all of your needs. If you haven't already rated, reviewed, subscribed, liked all of those bells and whistles, I would be absolutely honored if you would do that for Ask Me How I Know. Thanks again and go make it a great day. 